Jay Burns here coming to you live on this Monday, September the 5th, 2022. This is Labor Day here in America, and it's a national holiday. And But we're still coming to you live with this broadcast, and I know you're going to be really blessed as we are continuing our series on the goodness of God. And we're talking about God being good. And that goes against the grain of a lot of religious people because, uh, unfortunately, many have been taught, whether by experience or by uh, people that are standing in pulpits, that God is not always good. I'm telling you, God is good all the time. And we're going to continue that series today. We're going to be talking about today in the next several days about the good of the land. And I know you're not going to want to miss one aspect of that. You know, we're just coming out of summer now, being Labor Day today. The summer kind of officially ends today, even though it hasn't started yet to be uh, fall or autumn. But uh, just looking back over July and August, uh, you know, we have a budget every month that we want to meet. We haven't met it. We didn't meet it in July, and we didn't meet it in August. And now here we are in September. And I just want to say, because I know that some of you don't really listen to the entirety of the broadcast. And so you miss at the end the opportunity that we give to you uh, to participate in supporting our work. Now, we've been asking the Lord, my wife Cynthia and I have been asking God to give us some more partners. Uh, we're sending this, you know, pretty high there for 50 new partners but we'll take whatever people will uh, respond. But we're believing still for 50. Now, if you want to be one of those partners, we're not going to ask you to give a certain amount every month, but we're all going to suggest that you pray and see what the Lord would have you to give each month and make that commitment. And here's how you could do it. You could go uh, to these pages, which are mjbministries.org forward slash giving. Or you can text MJBMIN to 45777. Or if you want to just give a one-time gift, go to uh, Cash App. It's dollar sign MJB Ministries. Again, to become a partner, which is also involving a, being a prayer partner as well as a financial partner in helping support MJB Ministries, go to MJBMinistries.org forward slash giving or text MJBMIN to 45777 and if you want to give a one time gift you can give it any of these three ways but we suggest if you want to give a one time gift give it through the cash app at dollar sign MJB Ministries and we would certainly welcome uh, the support of each of you that are tuned in to watching us today. Praise God. That's all I'll say about that. Let me encourage you to visit the information above my shoulder here on website. We have free audios. Uh, there are links to our YouTube channel with over 250 free videos. Uh, we have also our mobile apps, the link for each of those. If you have a Google Play Store, you get your apps from, or the Apple App Store, both links are available on our website. We have the sign-up for our monthly e-newsletter that goes out right now to 580 people. And uh, you can be one of them. You'll see a pop-up window on our website to sign up to receive our free monthly e-newsletter. And then we have the archives on our newsletter on our website as well of the past newsletters we've put out. And I know they'll be a great blessing to you. There's so many great resources. We have the free audios we have on our website. We have so many things there for you, and we uh, really want you to take advantage of all uh, that we have there to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. I want to uh, engage in prayer right now as we begin this new week here of teaching God's holy 
and healing word today. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word today with those who are tuned in. And Father, I pray for an unction and a fresh anointing on me uh, and upon the people, on me to, uh, to speak uh, as you would speak through my lips, uh, and also that you would think through my mind, that you would cause the ears of the people to listen, cause their uh, minds to be open and their hearts to be receptive. Father, I pray that you'll draw people from the four corners of the earth who have access to the internet to be able to review and watch this broadcast and be impacted by the goodness of God's grace and mercy. Father, I pray today that there'll be supernatural signs, wonders, miracles, and even gifts of the Spirit that be manifest in this broadcast tonight. Not as I will, but as you will, Father. And for everything that will be said, done, revealed, and or manifested, I covenant with you now to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Praise God. We have a little problem with this one speaker over here. I'm trying to figure out what the problem might be. But anyway, we're going to go forward with the broadcast today. Praise the Lord forevermore. Amen. And we uh, are looking forward to sharing this teaching with you. And we really pray that you'll be able to stay tuned uh, with us as we bring forth the word of Almighty God. Here's our opening scripture. Uh, really, the whole psalm, Psalm 34, verses 1, uh, down to, oh, I guess it's around verse, well, I'm not guessing, I'll tell you exactly what it is, uh, around verse number 10. It's actually verse number 10, Psalm 34 verses 1 through 10. But we're just looking at verse 8, which really kind of gives the foundation. We've already read those first 10 verses there of this psalm. But verse 8 says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Can I get a, a good hearty amen from somebody here today? Think about the idea that the Bible says that uh, God is good. And his mercy endures forever. And then we can taste and we can actually see that the Lord is good. You know, goodness has a taste to it. And God, you can taste God. You know, we said last week how Jesus saw the faith of the four men that carried their friend through the roof to where Jesus was to be healed, the man who had the palsy. Well, if you could see faith, that's a sense. It's one of the five senses. Taste, hear, uh, see, smell, and uh, uh, it's, was it feel? And so there's five senses. And you can actually use, in a sense, in spiritual senses, but you can not only taste what God's Word says, but you can actually uh, see what spiritual things has God opened your eyes to them. Like Jesus saw the faith of the people. And like Psalm 34, 8 says, you can, you can taste and see. Taste and see. Say it out loud. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So God's goodness can be tasted and can be seen. And then we saw in James 1, 17, the Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift is where? From above. That would mean that all the bad and evil gifts are from below. But the ones that are from God, they're good and they're perfect and they're from above and they come down from who? From our Heavenly Father, the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Can I get a good amen? And then we saw also how wonderful it was of God when he created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, uh, God said, let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good, and God uh, divided the light from the darkness. And so if you read the rest of Genesis chapter 1, you're going to see that God said everything he made was good. And then on the last day, when before he rested on the sixth day, God said it was very good. Oh, I'm telling you, we serve a good God. And I, I don't know how you could think anything other than the fact that God is good. So I want to ask you a question today. Several questions. When it comes to 
eating food, we eat food to get nourishment on the inside of us. But when it comes to eating spiritually, we eat with our ears and really we eat with our eyes. This is what the Bible says when it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And like uh, Job 12, 11 says again, that as the ears uh, hear words and discern words and the tongue tastes food, so the ears discern the word of God and the tongue tastes the truth that contain, it's contained in the word of God. And so when scripture says, oh, <laughs> it, it tastes and see, it, it, it's not with a sad sound, but a joyful sound over such goodness that comes from God. Can I get an amen? So let me ask you this question today. This is a very valid question, and I really hope that uh, you'll take time to uh, consider this question. The question I want to ask you today is, what is your image of God? When you think of God, what is your image? You know, the Bible says in Exodus 20, of the first very commandment that we're told is that not only we're not supposed to have any other gods before him, but the second commandment is that we're not to make any graven image of who God is. You know, it's funny today how people have an idea of who God is. They have made an image of who they think God is and, or who God should be. And that's really a violation of the second commandment of the 10 commandments that God gave to Moses. And so I want you to see this today, that you have an image of God. Is your image based on what people have told you? Is your image of God based on what you think in your own mind and your own idea of who God should be? Well, I'm going to suggest that you throw that aside. You cast that down. Come on, somebody. And also that you reconsider what the Bible says about God. Now, you have to remember that God in the Old Testament dealt with mankind differently than he's dealing with God under the new covenant. This is a new and a better covenant or a testament that we have. It's been ratified and legislated by the promises of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we have that great blessing. Now, we're also told in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, that all, the to me, I said all, A-double-L, all the promises of God in Jesus are yes and in him, amen. So while we've been redeemed from the curses of the Old Testament and the curse of the law, Galatians tells us, we're also, we're also not redeemed from the promises that God made. Now, for instance, let me give you, uh, well, let me ask you a second question about your idea and your image of God. Do you think of him as an old man who is uh, basically grouchy and mean, spirited? Uh, do you see God as someone who has an ax to grind? Well, this is the reason I believe that so many young people reject God that their parents, in some cases, have presented to them. Who would want to who, who would want to serve uh, such a God like that? Well, he's not like that. Let me show you an Old Testament scripture from uh, first from Isaiah, and this is Isaiah chapter one and verse number nineteen. It says, "If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the what of the land." Well, notice it's the word "good." You shall eat the good of the land. Well, how many of you know the good is not the bad? God has good things he wants you to enjoy in life. Listen, if God said, if you'd be willing and obedient, those are two major keys right there. Willingness and obedience to what God has said to us in his word and how God has spoken to us individually by his Holy Spirit. Now, I remember Brother Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, who was uh, where I went to school and studied under him, among many, many others, of course, but he was one of my primary uh, people that influenced me other than my pastor in Long Island, Pastor Eugene Perfetta. But uh, Brother Hagen uh, was talking about how he struggled years ago. Healing was easy, but finances was difficult. And he went to the Lord one day and said, Lord, you know, your word says, if I'd be willing and obedient, I would eat the good of the land. And the Lord spoke to him and said to him, he said, well, you're probably, you don't qualify. 
And he said, what do you mean that I'm qualified? Lord, I, I've been obedient to what you said. If you were to tell me, son, the, the reason you're not enjoying the good of the land is because you haven't been obedient, with all due respect, I'd have to call you a, a liar. Well, the Lord said, you have been obeying me, as, you know, as far as you know here. He says, but the issue is you have not been willing. You see, it's possible to be obedient to God, but not doing it with a willing heart. It's kind of like that story we heard. Many of us have already heard this story about that little boy who was misbehaving in, in elementary school and his teacher called his name. Uh, let's just say his name was Johnny. He said, Johnny, go stand in the corner and, and, and stay there until I tell you to move. And he stood in the corner and he just was mad about being made to stand in the corner. And he turned around and looked at the teacher and he said to her, he said, listen, he said, I may be standing up on the outside, <laughs> he says, but I'm sitting down on the inside. <laughs> well, praise God, you know, you could be obedient like Johnny and not be willing, not doing it willingly. Well, the truth of the matter is many people fall into that category when it comes to their lives. They they give their tithes, they'll, they'll uh, have hands laid upon them for healing. You know, they do a lot of the, they read the word of God, they confess the word of God, they they pray, they pray in their heavenly language. They do all these things and they're saying, I don't, I don't understand why I'm not experiencing more of God's blessing. Well, you, you're like Brother Hagin, you've been obedient, but have you really been willing? You see, when the Lord spoke that to Brother Hagin. Brother Hagin said, it didn't take me very long to get willing. He said, in about 10 seconds, I changed my heart, made the adjustment. I said, okay, Lord, I'm willing now. Well, glory to God. He became willing and the, he began to see that God wanted him to enjoy the good of the land. He didn't just want him to eat the good of the land. He wanted him to wear the good of the land. He wanted him to drive the good of the land. He wanted his kids to be clothed in the good of the land. He wanted to have a house that was a house of the good of the land. Come on, somebody. He said, God said, if I'd be willing and obedient, I could eat and enjoy the good of the lamb. Now, notice when we are willing and obedient, again, the Bible says we will eat, or I like to say we will enjoy the good of the lamb because it doesn't just deal with, you know, eat what we eat. It has that obviously to do, but it has everything to do with where we live, the clothes we wear, the, the, the cars we drive, the the, the, all of these things are part of the good of the land that I believe God wants you to enjoy. You might say, I don't think that's the case. You're a prosperity preacher. Well, you know, Jesus didn't die for the poverty gospel. He didn't die so people could be cursed and be poor and struggling. He died so people could have victory in their lives. He died so we could live above and not beneath and be the head down the tail. Come on, somebody. And so, God wants you to be willing and obedient so you can enjoy the good that he has for you. Look at this verse of scripture. This is in Psalm 27 and verse number 13. And the psalmist wrote this, and I think it's powerful. He said, I would have lost heart. Now, the King James said, I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see what? The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, a lot of people think that, well, when I get to heaven, Pastor Mike, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to eventually start living the quality of life that God wants me to live when I get to heaven. Well, thank God heaven is going to be a great place to go to. Thank God we're going to have a, a mansion up there. Thank God for all the blessings and the streets are paved with gold and the gates of pearl and all the, the sea of glass and all the wonderful things that we'll see there among our relatives and friends and people that we knew from our church. Come on, somebody. But I'm going to say something to you. God isn't wanting you just to wait till you get to heaven. It says here again, let me show you it one more time. In Psalm 27, 13, I would have lost heart or fainted unless I had believed, listen, that I would see the goodness of God where? In the land of the living. And so God says you can have it in the land of the living. That's here down on planet earth. Can I say, can I get an amen from somebody today? See, God wants his children to believe several things. Number one, that he's a good God. 
But you see, religion, man-made religion I'm talking about, has taken away the reality of God's goodness. And as a result, they've left us with an incorrect view of who God really is. Now, people are believing not to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, but rather only when they get to heaven. And I'm going to say something to you that that's a misunderstanding of what God's plan for your life is. And you see, having cancer is not good. Having diabetes and having to test your sugar and take insulin shots and metformin or whatever other drugs you take, that's not good. You know, having eyes that aren't working right where you can't see macular degeneration, any kind of stigmatism is not good. Come on, somebody. Having arthritis and pain in your hips, in your legs, in your knees, and in your neck, that's not good. And people need to stop saying that it is good. And when I get to heaven, well, I'll have a glorified body, and you will. And you won't have any of the troubles you've had while you've been on the earth. But I'm telling you something, don't wait till you go to heaven. God wants you to experience what Jesus said we should pray and what's found in the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, that we can have heaven upon the earth. Look at the scripture of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse number 25. It simply says this, uh, that they also took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us. And they brought back word to us saying, it is a good land which the Lord our God is giving us. Nevertheless, you would not go up, but you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. What is this scripture referring to? This scripture here is referring to, it's a, it, the word Deuteronomy means to repeat or to say it again. And so this is a recount of what God said the 12 spies into the promised land to spy out the land, and they brought back this fruit of the land. And the Bible says they brought it all back, and they said, it is what? Notice what it says here, verse uh, number 25 in the latter part. It is a good land. Notice the word good. It's a good land, which the Lord our God is giving us. Why would God want to give them a good land? Well, friend, because God is a good God. Verse 27 goes on to say something I don't have here to show you, but I want to read it to you. It says in the King James, and you murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hated us, he's brought us forth out of the land of Egypt, listen to this, to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Now God just got done revealing to them in verse number 25 that the land that they uh, he was bringing them into was a good land. Why would he, uh, he, he bring them into a, a land where people would hate them, uh, where he'd be, they would be delivered into the hands of the Amorites, their enemies, and be destroyed by them? Listen, that does not even add up. You can't say God's good and then say, on the other hand, well, he's going to destroy us by the hands of the Amorites. Why would God reveal himself as being good and then destroy us? He's not some kind of psychopath. He's not some kind of God who is one way, one moment, but he's bipolar. And you never know which way the pendulum is going to swing with him. No, he's good all the time. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said in Malachi 4, I am the Lord and I change not. Come on, somebody. Look what it goes on to say here. I love this. This is a great verse of scripture in 1 John chapter 4. And we're going to read it in verse 15 on down. It says, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, Listen, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Oh, this is a different view in the New Testament of who God is. He is love. He goes on to say, God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because why? As he is, so are we in this world. Come on, somebody. I need a good amen at that one right there. As he is in heaven right now, the Bible says that's how we are on the inside in our spirits in this world. And God wants to manifest what's in us, in him, through Christ, 
and have it manifest outwardly in our life in this world. It goes on to say in verse number 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And you really could say in God. Hallelujah to Jesus forevermore. Can I get a good hearty amen? And so today I've come to the end of my time here to present the word to you. And I pray that you would get a better glimpse of the fact that God is a good God, that we can taste and we can see that he is good and that his mercy uh, endures forever and ever and ever. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody? And so God wants to bring you into a good land, a land that's flowing with milk and honey, a land where you can experience his healing power. Glory to God and uh, know him in a very intimate and a very personal way. Glory to God. This is God's plan. This is God's purpose for you today. And so I want you to experience it just like God wants you to experience it. And I believe that uh, as you are open and saying, God, I'm going to start talking of you in the positive. I'm going to start speaking of your goodness over my life that you'll start to see good things begin to take place in your life, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, in your relationships. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about in every area of your life, your emotions, in your children, on your job, in your business. Say God is good. One of the great statements in the Old Testament, it's amazing that it would be listed in the Old Testament, is it says there, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Why do you suppose it even says that? Well, because God was trying to convey even under the old covenant and how much truer is it under the new and better covenant that he is good and that his mercy endures forever. Hey, glory to God forevermore. Hey, I want to tell you real quick about my book uh, called Discover the Life You Were Born to Live, uh, Dare to Make a Difference. And I want you to order it today from uh, churchhappensbook.com. That's the URL we have for all of our books. And I want you to get that today. Also, we have our other book uh, called Church Happens. And uh, that's where the website is. It came from churchhappensbook.com. You can order it there. And I even have free copy, a free copy for pastors. If you're a pastor, I want you to go to churchhappensbook.com and scroll down, see this book cover below. It will say, I'm a pastor. Tap on that, write in your email and your name, and I'll send you a PDF copy of this book in its entirety, free of charge. It will also come with a bulk ordering discount chart that you can use to order copies of the actual book for your members and for your first time guests and receive a discount depending on the number of books you order. I also want to let you know, if you're a pastor, that uh, we have a four-hour Saturday seminar that we do in churches that welcome us to come. Uh, it's uh, based on my first book, Discover the Life You're Born to Live, and I wrote a separate uh, companion study guide that goes right along with it. And these two books with the seminar cost $30 per person, $25 for the two books, and $5 that we give to the host church uh, to use it to, for lunch, to buy the lunch for each individual. And I want you to be sure you get it because it's God's intention uh, that we have a good day of fellowship, a good day of feasting on His Word, and we have a decent lunch as well, praise God. Now, when we come for that Saturday seminar, we want to stay for Sunday and minister in your Sunday morning services and then host if you're open for it and the Lord impresses you on it. We can have a Sunday night miracle and healing rally that I'm telling you will be unprecedented because of what God has done in my life, raised me up from seven strokes in three parts of my brain. Six years ago, this happened. And my wife, who's received creative miracles in her teeth, I'm telling you, we have seen the handiwork of God, and we know how to minister that to people in your community. And so we want you to uh, welcome that into your church. Also, uh, we have a live praise and worship album that you can order digitally from iTunes or wherever you get your digital music called Let Your Glory Fill This House. It's by me, Michael J. Burns, and all the songs here are original. And I'll encourage you to get it 
And I know if you do, you will be blessed. Praise God. Well, I love you. So glad to be with you today. And I just want to remind you that if you want to be a partner with us, visit mjbministries.org forward slash giving, where you can sign up to be a prayer partner and a monthly financial supporter of our ministry. And you can give it uh, as it's listed here on the screen. Uh, MJBMIN is a text to 45777. Uh, also to Cash App, which is dollar sign MJB Ministries. Be sure to visit mjbministries.org forward slash giving as well, and you'll find all that you need right there. I love you so much. So good to be with you today, and we'll see you tomorrow on the broadcast as we continue with God's healing word on the goodness of God. We love you so much. God bless each and every one of you.